Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Martine Giangiop. As you can hear, I have a French accent. I'm from the Quebec uh, province in Canada. And I'm also half Italian, so <laughs> if you see me talking loud and just right, making a lot of gestures is just a part of the culture. <laughs> I work for the Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada. I'm at the headquarter office in Ottawa. I'm here today to describe our oceans management approach in Canada. The main objectives of my presentation are twofold. The first one is to describe Canada's oceans management approach and our efforts to date and some of the lessons we have learned over the years. And the second one is to discuss Canada's renewed commitment to oceans management that were made recently. And the last slide will show the contribution of the achieving these commitments to an ecosystem approach. Before getting into the details of this presentation, uh, I'd like just to present you with a quick overview of our, of our geographical context and our legal context in Canada. Marine area are equivalent to two thirds of our Canadian uh, land mass. We have the longest uh, coastline and the second largest continental shelf in the world. And the Arctic is vitally important to Canada, making up to 68% of our coastline and playing a central role as a, our uh, cultural identity as a northern country. Marine-based activities are generating uh, approximately 39, uh, 39 uh, billion in economic activities annually and uh, creating uh, employment to more than uh, 326,000 people. Our oceans have significant spiritual, cultural, and social value for our coastal and indigenous people. We have sparsely populated coastlines with very few urban centers, mainly in the southern part of the country. And as everywhere around the world, we have growing intensity and complexity of marine uses, especially in specific areas. As for the legal and the policy context, the Oceans Act is the starting point for guiding the development of the oceans policy framework in Canada. Uh, the Canadian Ocean Strategy guides the implementation of the Oceans Act and the overarching goal of the Canadian Ocean Strategy is the sustainable development of human activities uh, within our oceans. The integrated management uh, framework is central to the delivery of both the Oceans Act and the uh, Canadian Ocean Strategy. And integrated management in Canada is uh, actually an ecosystem-based approach. We've been using various terms over the years, integrated management, integrated oceans management, oceans management, an ecosystem approach. For us, it's all the same. It's really based on an ecosystem approach. Um, and I, I won't present the, the oceans management framework, but our framework is, is very similar to the ecosystem uh, framework that was presented this morning. We actually took part of the development of this EEA framework, and when we came back home, we modified and, and, and updated our oceans management framework to reflect the, the international EEA framework. So IAM is based on an ecosystem approach, taking into consideration social, cultural, uh, economic, and ecological objective, and identifying management measures and uh, finding tools to implement them. Nearly 20 years has passed since the Oceans Act came into force, and much work has been done within uh, five of our uh, 13 bioregional units in Canada that sets the foundation for oceans management and an ecosystem approach in Canada. This over the years we've identified as with the first step in, in a ecosystem approach, we have identified our marine barrio regional units. We have 13 of them. We have focused within five of them, mainly in the uh, bio regions that were the most uh, uh, uses, the, they were the most uh, human uses and um, Within those five bioregional units, we have established oceans governance bodies composed of the federal, provincial, and territorial governments, aboriginal groups, and stakeholders forum. Uh, within those units, we've uh, developed our biophysical, social, economic, and cultural overviews, and we have identified everywhere in our offshore areas and, main, uh, and uh, most of the coastal area, we've identified the ecologically, biologically significant areas and species. We call them EBSAs. I think most of the people here must be uh, um, familiar with the term. 
Uh, this we have uh, collected the baseline data and conducted some uh, human use activities. We've mapped out those activities and. Uh, with all this information, we uh, developed five oceans management plans in those five uh, areas, within which uh, we have identified the, the ecosystem objective with our partners and stakeholders, and uh, we have identified all those EBSAs and uh, identified some management measures. Some of those management measures are currently being implemented within uh, these plans, but a lot of effort remains to be done to uh, continue the implementation. <coughs> Parallel to the oceans planning that I've just described, we've uh, established uh, several marine protected areas or, uh, in Canada. In the Arctic, we have established the Therium uh, MPA, that among other ecosystem objectives is protecting uh, beluga uh, habitat and uh, harvesting rights of, uh, of uh, Inuvialuit people. And um, we are on their way to establish a second MPA, a little bit east of, uh, of that MPA in the Beaufort Sea. And we've undertaken networks, uh, plant network of MPAs everywhere in Canada as, as well. Um, our two decades of experience with oceans management have taught us great lessons. I'd like to share just a, little, a few with you today. Um, adopting a marine bioregional approach is very important um, as it sets the boundaries within which we will collect information, analyze information, and within which we can identify the key players that should be at the table uh, uh, to, uh, to move on with marine planning and management. We definitely recognize that we still need to enhance our understanding of potential impacts, especially cumulative impacts from human activities on our uh, significant areas and significant species. We have started conducting risk analysis and risk assessment of specific uh, pressures on specific components, but uh, we haven't uh, gone too far into uh, the world of integrated ecosystem uh, assessment. Uh, we recognize it is needed, but we also recognize it's complex. We need data, we need uh, ecosystem models. We need the will to uh, work together and uh, put all those information together and to conduct those uh, integrated assessments. Um, we are also more and more thinking that we need to establish ecosystem thresholds for specific ecosystem or ecosystem components such as uh, vulnerable uh, species or habitat and to establish some limits for specific pressures such as uh, increased nutrient loading or uh, in increased uh, noise from marine transportation. We're, we're looking more and more at uh, eventually uh, establishing some thresholds uh, in key areas. Of course, uh, we are continuing our transition from a species by species based approach to moving toward an ecosystem approach to fisheries management and ultimately toward a, a, an ecosystem based management approach. We are in the continuum. Uh, as I, I said, with the, in the previous presentation with Iceland, we're also starting to uh, identify some specific uh, uh, biomass uh, targets, and, uh, but uh, we, we still have a lot of work to do uh, in that field as well. And uh, the last lesson learned I want to share, it's about marine spaces. We recognize the need to uh, define uh, spaces, spaces for conservation and also for activity development basically uh, doing marine spatial planning, especially in high human uses area. Uh, Canada has a large marine estate, so we cannot focus and develop marine spatial plans everywhere, but we're seriously looking at uh, developing maybe some of the plan in specific areas. Uh, earlier this year, uh, uh, Renewed oceans management commitments were made by our uh, newly elected Liberal government, which will allow Canada to uh, move forward on oceans management. Uh, after nearly eight years of uh, conservative government, who had different priorities, um, getting back into oceans management is really um, um, bringing a lot of enthusiasm and joy uh, within the uh, environment community in Canada. And these commitments were made in response to increased national and international efforts to mitigate impacts uh, from human activities on our ecosystem. 
These commitments, they include increasing the proportion of Canada's marine and coastal areas that is protected to 5% by 2017 and 10% by 2020. Since we currently protect more or less only 1% of our uh, coastal and ocean, we have a lot of work to do, uh, especially by 2017. So you can imagine we're really, really busy uh, in the country uh, working with our partners to, uh, to advance, uh, to, to meet this, uh, this commitment. Another important commitment was made, that was made by our government is to uh, working with uh, others to better co-manage our oceans. Under the Oceans Act, our minister has the mandate to uh, lead and facilitate the development of uh, integrated management plan in collaboration with others. But this government is saying yeah, that, yes, this is your role and this is what we should do. In order to do ocean management, we have to work with others. This is sending a strong signal that we have to do a better job at that. Uh, this government is also reconnecting with, the, with science in general, with the scientific community, uh, and it's, it's committed to using scientific evidence and to take in, into account climate change uh, when we're making decisions uh, affecting fish stocks and oceans management. With a special focus on examining the implication of climate change in the Arctic. And the last uh, commitment related to oceans management is improving marine safety and transportation. Um, reaching these ambitious targets will require the application of a variety of conservation mechanisms working in collaboration with others. Um, Canada is using a, a multi-faceted and balanced approach to uh, reaching those marine conservation targets. And this approach includes finalizing the establishment of existing Oceans Act MPAs and foreseeing new opportunity to establish new MPAs. We will be supporting other federal partners toward oceans conservation designation. In Canada, it's not only our department who has the mandate, but uh, to establish protected area, we have other uh, federal agency and provincial agency. This, we will be supporting those uh, agencies. And for instance, uh, we, uh, we will be supporting Parks Canada Agency to establish National Marine Conservation Areas, or NMCAs. Uh, there is currently one underway in the Arctic that you might be aware. It's called the uh, Lancaster Sound NMCA. It's, it's, it's really a huge area that we're uh, hoping to protect from specific human activities. Um, and uh, it's at the entrance of the Northwest Passage. It's a very important area for uh, Inuit people as well. And actually the Inuit people, they've been asking uh, for many years to, to have this uh, area protected. The, this, this is a good news. Another tool we are using to reach our target will be to identify and establish other effective area-based conservation measures, such as uh, establishing fisheries closures. Um, for instance, in Baffin Bay area, we have identified uh, vulnerable uh, habitats such as deep water corals and sponges. So we're looking at uh, closing some of those areas to bottom uh, fisheries that uh, can have a high risk of uh, damage to those areas. So those fisheries closure would be counted as other effective area-based uh, measure. Uh, also critical habitat, establishing those for species at risk would count and using other relevant spatial conservation measures such as uh, the conservation areas that have been identified in community conservation plans or in uh, land use plans such as the Nunavut land use plan. And the last tool we're using to reach our target is to bring some amendments to our Oceans Act, does the bring amendments to uh, the legislation. Um, to promote the identification, analysis, and establishment of new uh, marine protected area. Uh, in the past, it took uh, approximately seven to eight years to establish an MTA. Thus, we are looking at bringing modification to the law to enhance and, ad and uh, fasten the process. And we, are, we will also make sure that we're taking a, the precautionary approach uh, when establishing a protected area. Um, in addition to reaching these commitments, uh, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, uh, on behalf of uh, the Canadian government, we are leading the uh, development of uh, networks of MPAs in Canada. 
our, our uh, networks will be, uh, the ultimate goal is to establish uh, networks of MPE in all of the 13 bioregions that we have identified. But we will start with uh, only five bioregions. Uh, we're starting with the regions where we have uh, done oceans management in, in the past 20 years. This we have a lot of data and we have conducted analysis uh, already. We are using the ecologically, biologically significant area as the ecological foundation for network planning. And we're also um, utilizing the current uh, governance uh, mechanism that we had established for oceans management in, the, in those bioregions. This we are building on work that we have done the past 20 years. Uh, just to focus a little bit more in the Arctic with regards to marine conservation, MPE network is under development in the Beaufort Sea LME or in um, the Inu Vialuit region, re, uh, region uh, and the Nunavut, uh, Western Nunavut region, which is, it is the eastern part of the Beaufort Sea. We are conducting consultation with uh, the local communities uh, and our Inu Vialuit partners and Nunavut partners to. Um, identify conservation priorities for MPA network. We are also validating uh, the traditional knowledge and the lo local knowledge data uh, that uh, were provided by those communities. And the ideal here, the idea will be to arrive with a marine, uh, uh, with a MPA network design, which will basically be a map identifying the area for protection. And hopefully these uh, MPA design uh, map will maximize the conservation efforts with, with the smallest spatial coverage and emphasize uh, connectivity. The, uh, marine, the MPA network uh, design will also be used eventually for uh, marine planning or for other uh, purposes. Um, to meet our government commitments with regard to science and climate change, um, this government uh, is, uh, is keen on continuing uh, ongoing research and monitoring to better understand the potential impact of human activities and cumulative impacts from climate change on Arctic ecosystem. We are investing in conducting research to address ongoing and emerging issues such as ocean acidification and their rising sea levels. We're collaborating with our, uh, our neighbors on research into biological impacts on oceans acidification and especially on commercial species of uh, shared interest. And we are conducting uh, hydrographic surveys to ensure safe navigation, especially in the Arctic. As for our commitment to better co-manage our oceans, our department is currently pursuing a policy agenda uh, that will look at marine spatial planning uh, we are currently looking at what has been done domestically and internationally. We are really interested in understanding uh, the process and um, the lessons they have learned. And uh, we are looking at different type of co collaborative uh, governance models. Um, we already have a, a governance model, but we're looking at improving it. Uh, we would like to make sure that um, the partners that are at the table in doing uh, spatial planning or marine planning and even conservation uh, uh, in Canada that the partners that are at the table, they are accountable to deliver on some of the, the thing that we all wish to do together. Because without accountability, it's really hard to, uh, to implement uh, what we wish to do. Um, and also we're looking at enhancing the integration of, integration of traditional knowledge uh, into uh, marine planning. The last commitment I'd like to discuss with you is to uh, improving marine safety in Canada and with a focus in the Arctic. As we are all aware, the Arctic is warming rapidly and uh, each year there is less and less sea ice, therefore opening the Arctic for uh, increasing marine traffic and potential oil spill. Uh, our stakeholders and indigenous uh, People, they have a, a vo a voice, their concern with regard to uh, increased contaminants and potential spill in Arctic waters. This, uh, we are looking at conducting target, targeted ecological and biological uh, research and conducting risk assessments 
uh, in specific area in the Arctic, especially along potential marine transportation corridors that could be established within the Northwest Passage and in other areas in uh, the Southern Arctic area. Um, the last uh, slide is to make a, uh, to try to show that how we can, how by reaching those commitments, we will uh, contribute to advancing an ecosystem approach. Of course, by establishing new marine protected area and national marine conservation area and other effective area-based conservation measure, we will enhance our existing ecological foundation uh, by working with others uh, in the conservation and the planning processes, we will promote the integration of traditional knowledge, socioeconomic, cultural, and ecological values of Arctic residents, which is a foundational piece in an ecosystem approach. And uh, ad we advancing the science knowledge of climate change and other human uh, use and impact will enhance our understanding of the cumulative impacts and will help us identifying mitigation measures and adaptation measures. Uh, just in conclusion, uh, I hope um, that uh, I've, uh, I've succeeded in tra <laughs> transmitting you uh, my enthusiasm and the enthusiasm and the willingness of uh, our government to uh, move forward with oceans management and an ecosystem approach in the next few years. And uh, I really hope because we have a lot of knowledge and we, we, have, we have the data, we have analyzed the, the data, we know what we want, we have our objective. I really hope in the next few years we will really move toward implementation. Thank you, merci, Nakul Mick.